Hey, Internet, I'm Dan. <coughs> and I'm Chaz. And this is Matt. Yo. And this is Wine of Serious Business, episode 298. Yeah. We're here drinking You're some Peruvian it. wines. I know, I'm on it tonight. Yeah. Um, we're here drinking some Peruvian wines. Matt brought us back some presents. Hell yeah. Went to yeah. Peru over Thanksgiving. Um, and it was interesting because they... So, it was actually really hard to find Peruvian wine down there, surprisingly, in Peru. you think it would be easy, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody there, like, you ask the Peruvians, they're like, oh, it's garbage. You don't want to drink it. Drink the Argentinian Malbecs. Peruvian wine is not good. Worse than it's Amsterdam? All, that deal was the same deal. It was like the yeah, exact just, same situation. Yeah. Like, and you, I couldn't find them anywhere. And then I finally found a specialty shop where I could get some. We did have some at a restaurant once, and so, but yeah, these are we're trying them blind. So, so, so hand recommendations from somebody at the shop then, or yeah, you just I, I would, wine? I wouldn't say that, but okay. it was like he was like, yeah, these are good ones. Pointed at them. So, okay, didn't really. I don't know if you know what he was talking about. He was like ten years younger than I was. So, sure. Sure. Well, and he, I assume he didn't point you just the, the two most expensive wines in the show. Yeah, actually, either, yeah. Right? They, they weren't the most expensive so ones. So that's something, yeah. at least. So, like yeah. You weren't, yeah. Cool. Um, do you, I assume you don't know anything about them either, right? We got no. a red one and a white one, right? No, they're from the Andes, so we know that's that. That's interesting. So yeah. the red one, the white one, I know, is Viognier and Chardonnay, right? So okay. So that's that, and then this is a Malbec. Let's pour, so, yeah. Yeah. Grab so it. let's yeah. pour some juice. White wine this in glass. Is Blanco de Blancos. <laughs> so, yeah. you got to use that voice every time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's a good voice. Hey, Allison, do, you, do, do you like this go. voice or do you not like this voice? So there you go. <laughs> sure, thank you. All right. Labrio uh, con las variedades. <laughs> bueno. Good job. I sound like a soap opera. I'm yeah, like, you kind of do. Yeah. Or, or like the... Yeah. <laughs> Blanco de Blanco, man. Blanco de Blanco. Blanco de Blanco. So the cool thing I thought about this is this is 2009. Yeah. Right? Oh, a little so, bit of age. Yeah. Yeah. Takama, yeah, from Ica, Peru. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. But. I think it's in the south. I okay. Think. Yeah, because it's near the Chile. Like hmm. most of the stuff is grown near like the Chilean, Argentinian, Peruvian border. Right. So, but everybody says the Peruvian side is garbage because obviously Chile and and Argentina. Their marketing yeah. machines are yeah, yeah. yeah. powerful. Yeah. yeah. Got that French money. Yeah. The nose is really almost you could say tight still yeah like there's not it's not given off a lot. i wouldn't guess the age based on the nose no 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 super fresh they're like minute like stones like little cement maybe a little yeah, a little flower a little seashell or something like that like a, a little bit like the malolactic thing yeah. sticking a out touch. a little yeah. touch of that a little bit of butteriness coming out not like an oaky thing it's yeah. just uh just that aroma you get from malolactic fermentation exactly it's not vanilla it's like that like yeah buttery thing so a little bit of pears, but not a lot of fruit on the nose. Pretty, yeah, really. Pretty, pretty austere. Yeah. yeah, pretty austere. Yeah. Interesting. Nice and not like not like really anything I'm familiar with. I think that's the Viognier coming through with some of those tropical fruit flavors. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely the Viognier coming through with that little bit of bitterness on the finish. A little heat, Viognier too. is the strongest, definitely a strong character of this wine. I get a little, little bit of alcohol going on in there, like a little heat coming through. A little through. booze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can tell I, we're kind of steaming up the glass. This wine's pretty cold still, but I think that's yeah. working to its advantage. Um, I can definitely see where they talk about this working with seafood. I, I kind of get that. It's got that round character to it. Yeah, it does. Um, Yes, yeah, yeah. like it's mild. It's easy to drink. Like it's not like mm -hmm. bad by any means. It's not like amazing. I feel like it really is mostly Viognier, and they use those other wines to kind of uh, Round add up. a little bit of complexity to it. Maybe that's some of that minerality. Yeah, I'm looking for the Chardonnay here, and I'm not finding it. Yeah, right I don't get any um, Chardonnay at all. Uh, the Viognier definitely sticks out. That sort of like stone freeness. Um, the like edgy acidity that Viognier's can tend to have is definitely there in spades, along with the bitter finish. Oh, and it's Sauvign talking about. Sauvignon as well. Sorry, that's the other one oh. here. Yeah, Sauvignon Blanc. Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the Viognier definitely is yeah. the, the, the driver of all the flavor, at least on the palate. Mm -hmm. um, that said, pretty easy to drink. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I tend to like Viognier. Um, this is yeah. It's it's middle of the road. Like yeah. this isn't so, this isn't blowing my mind. Um, it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Right, and for for kind of a, a, a shot in the dark with wines yeah. we're not familiar with it at all, this is this is a little better than I expected it would be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially given how much people hated it on them already. Right. It was like the same yeah. as the Dutch. Like I think they hated on it more in Peru than the Dutch did. Hmm. Which is interesting. So. Like like totally drinkable, and if, especially if it was just like casually hanging out with people or like yeah. at a cafe somewhere. Totally, I, I, I yeah. enjoy multiple glasses of it. So. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but that said, like eighty. Four eighty-five point wine somewhere yeah. in that regard. I mean, like, yeah. it's got some neat flavors. I, the, 
I don't even sense really the age on it that much. No, I mean, no, maybe no. a little. I can't thing. believe that it's a 2009. Right? Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's holding up really well age wise, um, but just a nice, easy drink in white. So yeah, yeah, which makes me feel good for the red. So that's another thing you don't know when you're buying wines from places you don't know. Like this clearly was well stored, yes. right? Yes. Like this hasn't been going through a lot of temperature fluctuations or yeah, sitting warehouse or whatever. So yeah, I, I, I'm. Ugh. Yeah, I'm I'm 84 points too, and I, and I I imagine this wasn't expensive either. Right? I don't remember. How much okay, it costs. something pays those. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so. Um, I think you would remember it if you were like, whoa, that's expensive. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was that. Much. You don't, you don't that. I so, think it was under 20 bucks. Right, and and it, that, yeah, that delivers about what I expect. I'd say yeah. kind of entry level white Bordeaux. It kind of reminds me of. Yeah. But, um. But yeah. Yeah. Decent wine. Yeah. Hit the mineral and the acid. Anyway. Yeah, I put it like 83 maybe. I, again, yeah. I'm not a huge NA fan in general. Or it's like, I do get a little hint of the Sauvignon coming through. Mm-hmm. Tiny little grass, but like, it's not my thing. So, but 83. Yeah. Not so, bad. So one thing I thought was cool about this this next wine that we're going to try, the Malbec, mm-hmm. was when Matt brought it back, you came back from Peru. You guys came back from Peru when? Like It was uh, November, end of November. It was right after Thanksgiving, so. And so this is labeled 2015. And he came yeah. back in November 2015, and I <laughs> that can't right? be right. Right? right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it kind of, uh, I was like, w- wait a minute. That's What's funny. going on here? And so obviously the uh, the growing seasons are flipped. Yeah. Uh, or, oh, right. Yeah, because it's reversed. Right, so, yeah. right. so yeah. it can be, yeah. So this would be like the equivalent of a 2014 in, yeah. in the Northern Hemisphere. Correct, so. correct. Right. But it was just November's funny. the spring release. Which that means right. this is like an 08, which is really <laughs> yeah. interesting. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually. Yeah, you're right. Damn reversal all of, of the world. All, all of our assumptions. Ooh, that's purple. Yeah. There yeah, we go. It, it, cool this about this, it says right on here. the back that the that, that, that this wine, so the, this is, uh, the, yeah, also from the Valle de Ica, but but the Inti, Intipalca, it says is an Incan word uh, for the name, which is which is pretty cool. It means va- Valley of the Sun. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, that, that's pretty interesting. Did it say what grapes are in here? We're, it's this my Malbec. Malbec only. Okay. Yeah, oh, 100% Malbec. Yeah. Malbec. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Yeah, so the Incan culture down there is like popping, too. That's like, that's the other thing. The interesting beverage of choice of the Incans is chicha, which is like this crazy, like, corn whiskey, like, corn fermented beer drink. It's weird. Hmm. But it's like, you go huh. to these, like, chicha bars. What were the chicha bars called? She's not listening. <laughs> but yeah, there's these, like, chicha bars you go to on the side of the road. They have, like, sod tops. And they have a bunch of guinea pigs being raised for food later, like, yeah. to eat. Yeah. And yeah, you just drink these like little cups of chicha and get all fucked up on on corn drink. It was like sixteen so. percent alcohol, twenty percent alcohol somewhere. In it's there. like twelve, I think. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, so it's way stronger than yeah, but than like a beer. It's like yeah. soju or something. Is yeah, like soju. Level. Level of soju level? Yeah, and then they have another one that's like a strawberry chicha. Is it distilled a little bit or no? No, I think okay. it's just because corn is like so fastly fermenting like, sure. because there's so many fermentable sugars in corn. Okay. It's just yeah, they. Huh. Yeah, it was. I thought it was good. So. Cool. Would you Would you ever try and make it? I have actually a recipe for it in this for, book. Yeah, yeah. for home brewing, right? Yeah. Like, it's really big in, like, Incan culture in general and, like, Mexican, Aztec culture. Any of those, like, sort of uh, Central American, like, native cultures. Sure. Pretty huge. So. I suppose, right, where they yeah. had corn coming out their ears. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Pun, yeah. pun intended. 2,000 years, yeah. Years of corn coming out their ears. Oh, man. It smells like some perp right there. It smell like candy, like candy paint. This is... Yeah, yeah. So definitely some new French oak on this, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No black black earth notes, kind of black cherry skins. Yep, and black cherry, like boysenberries. Like, sort of, yeah, I was gonna say like the uh, almost jamified uh, yeah. boysenberries, blackberries. Straight uh, up smuckers up in this cup. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of tire, right? A little bit. Of, yeah, I was gonna say it's got sort of like the uh, the, the olivey, the black olivey sort yeah. of rubbery component, yeah. like tire rubber component. Yeah. I mean, if you like that perp, it's mm-hmm. yeah, the granddaddy of perps. Yeah. Yeah, smooth, rich on the palate. Yep, the tannins time. are like tannins are there, but like pretty, they, pretty really, always, yeah, yeah, really easy drinking. Yeah, wow, it's just like surprising, cold, cold chilling right there. I yeah. can see, and this this is a little on the cold side too. I'm trying to give it a little love, but I can see this being really popular. Um, yeah, I'd say that it's not terribly complex, but there's a little complexity, mm-hmm. and for people who love like that that bigger sense of body, if you're you know if you're looking for California style wines like this this brings it home yeah like, this does this, this, this yeah. would be something that you would drink with like your really cool like aunt and you get drunk with her and she just got like a new Peruvian boyfriend that's basically <laughs> like yeah it's just like 
I love it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, we could never come up with that. Yeah, thumbs up if we need more Matt on the show. Right? Yeah, it's, it's not like Grandma Wine, like, which is like, like us on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like Grandma Wine that's like Franzia, right? It's like your cool aunt. She mm. has like yeah. a moderately good taste in wine. Not like taste, but like she knows what tastes good at least. You know what this reminds me of um, is sort of the wines. Um, hmm. Okay, so like, like the, cheap, from Walla Walla? the cheaper, <laughs> the cheaper um, Washington and California Cabernets. And, yeah. and red wine blends, but the tannins um, aren't as aren't as heavy on them. Though, I don't think. But this. neither are those. Yeah. Like they they're definitely Some crafted them, no. in a style that I think is not intended to age, and that's what this feels like. It feels like I mean, it could be just a product of the way it's made. But mm -hmm. the tannins are super relaxed, right? Yeah, yeah. A little and, chalky on the finish, but they're definitely yeah. no. And this is ready to rock right now. Right, like yeah. this is drinking wonderfully now. Um, it's one of those wines that you, if you just wanted to like impress somebody who didn't know anything about wine, this would do it. Yeah, like this, this is just, this is totally a crowd pleasing style wine. Yeah, like, it's it's very easy to drink, provides all that like good dark rich flavor, uh, super easy to understand. And, and I will say like you could blind it in a lineup, and tell people that this this costs sixty bucks out of California, and nobody would second guess you. Right, uh, everybody would be like it's a little it's a little uh, simple. Uh, uh, you could on. do worse for that price too. Sixty right? man. Okay. Thirty-five. I stand by it. Well, you can do worse. Yeah. You can do worse in Bordeaux for that price. You start smoking weed. That's wow. funny. Um, so. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so that said, um, really easy drinking, nice red wine. Like this is like an eighty-six, eighty-seven. Points. Yeah, I agree. Really delicious. Um, definitely, we'll, we'll finish the bottle. Yeah, Chaz is gonna have purple teeth later tonight. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. I'm getting yeah, just a little bit of complexity with the dark fruits, a little yeah. floral late. Um, There's nothing wrong with it. Like no, that's the thing. Like, no, it's good wine. Yeah. And, and, and again, for kind of a, a, a at least half blind purchasing yeah. shot from yeah. a region you're not familiar with, this is this is pretty solid. And yeah. and I would love to. I actually <coughs> would be very interested in trying like more stuff from their lineup because if this True. is like the Kind of like con like consumer Baseline. friendly or like young young drinking, you know, jump out and get you like that does its job and maybe they've got some more interesting terroir driven stuff that's a little more yeah a little more intricate. I'd be interested in trying. So, the terroir yeah. of the Andes. Terroir of the Andes. That's awesome. Not a lot of terroir on this. I don't no. think. But uh, no, <laughs> they're Rocky Mountains. But I hope it's but, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool show. Yeah. The cool. Thanks for bringing these back. Yeah. By yeah. The way, as always, like when when Matt travels. Bringing back some gems. Yeah. Weird yeah, wines. Super, yeah. super yeah. exciting. Well, yeah. the next big trip is Italy for oh, vacation. Man. Well, so. they don't make good wine in Italy. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, I'll see if I get some library releases where Chaz will actually like it if it's like 30 years old. Yeah. So. We'll see what happens. Yeah. 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 Or Moscato for me. There's yeah, a, yeah, I get that yeah, Moscato. I'll drink, I'll drink it. There's a big joke amongst our friends, and basically what it is is like I always say Barolo is never ready to drink. They're like, <laughs> they'll be like, "Oh, check out this Barolo I got drank from the early '90s." I'm like, "Yeah, it's still not ready to drink. It needs another ten years." Yeah, we had a '96 Rinaldi the other day. He's like, "It's too young, too young." <laughs> I just haven't had the experiences with the with the younger stuff that other people have. It's uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, question of the day, Matt, you got to come up with something. Uh, I know you can do it. What's the best wine that a relative has ever poured for you where that relative does not know anything about wine, oh. such as your cool aunt? I don't have an answer for that, but that's a good question. Somebody's got to have a story out there. And tell the story. It's entertaining for the people who read the comment. It's a good, it's a good thing to do. We actually, actually, one time I had, the first time I had uh, um, Ramey Chardonnay, who was my grandma randomly bought it once. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, and they make good Yeah, wine. it's decent. For, for California, it's good. Right. So I, I actually, <laughs> I, right off the top of my head, I don't have an answer for that. I would say, like, I don't think either one of our families really drank much wine at all growing up. Not at all. And when it did show up, it was not <coughs> right. interesting. So yeah. most of the time that, that we drink wine at home or down down in Roseburg, it's, uh, it's, it's yeah, frantic. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's good. It's decent stuff. It's just... Um, you bring it. My, my parents didn't start drinking nice wine until I started drinking yeah. nice wine. So. Same here. But tell us a story in the comments. We'd love to hear that. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're about to get stuck in and shoot 300 later tonight, but uh, we'll see you guys next week. Keep, right. keep that shit 300. 300. Need to know what later, guys. <laughs>